Let me play you just the DI and we'll bring the BOD in so you can see how good it sounds, really. If I play you just the parallax that we had. You know, it's got that sort of like extra bit of vibe, but hear this compared to it. And we'll bring in the EQs and stuff. Do you hear how it gets a bit more grunty and a bit more grindy? That's because you sort of lost that, that part, that attack of the bass, and that can sort of give the kick and stuff like extra teeth. This is part two of replacing my entire mix with stock plugins. This one's on guitar and bass. We've got a bass DI to work with that we would usually use Parallax from Neural DSP. And we've got printed down guitar tones that we'll be shaping with the free EQs, multiband compressors, etc. within Logic. And just quickly, if you make music like this and you want me to mix your next record, head over to terrybeckleyrecording.com, hit me up in the contact form, and I will get back to you. Okay, bass. This plugin, I must confess, doesn't come with Logic, but it's completely free from TSE Audio and loads of people use it. And it's just, it just sounds good. Sometimes it does, it can fit your track better than what I normally use, which is um, Parallax from Neural DSP. You can see there, normally would have used the Parallax and it can be better sometimes. Then I'm, I'm cutting down a high cut, everything below 4K. Then using the console EQ from Logic, we are, boosting some mid-range because I was trying to connect the bass and the guitars there was a bit of a like a dip felt like it it needed a bit more mid-range presence only a little bit bit of a bit of a high shelf but obviously we've got the 4k cut so it wasn't too bad and then we're driving it with the smooth as well channel EQ just to bring out some problems and then some this 1k area on the bass that's where you'll get that sort of pick attacks from one or one and a half one and a half is usually a bit too clanky and grindy for me. I prefer it down here, the, like the 1K area. And then I would have got rid of that razor bladey sound that comes from, from distorted bass sometimes. Compressor, 1176. Didn't go nuts on the um, attack this time. Reined it in a little bit because you probably get quite a lot of um, pick attack from the EQ music that I did. So that's what that is. Soft distortion. I think the clipping would have worked best on drums. Multipressor. This is to get, so obviously controlling the low end, making sure it's pinned and compressed. And then if you feel like you need more later on in the game, you push it up a little bit. And same here, you know, you can see this band here. I really, if you see where these two blue markers are, I really compressed it hard. And then just this little area here and then bring that up if I feel like it needs a bit more of that. sort of 200 hertz that you can accidentally cut too much of in, in a mix. More EQ, more of that sort of grindiness getting pulled out. And then the limiter on the end, the logic limiter. I prefer the legacy one so much. This one just confuses me. Okay, before and after, let me play you just the DI and we'll bring the BOD in so you can see how good it sounds, really. Let's play you the last little chorus. It, sound, it sounds good, right? And we'll bring in the EQs and stuff. Do you hear how it gets a bit more grunty and a bit more grindy? That's because without that, I'll play it in the whole mix. So you sort of lost that that part, that attack of the bass, and that can sort of give the kick and stuff like extra teeth. I don't know how to describe it any better than that. I'll start with it on and I'll turn those EQs off. Yeah, can you hear that grindiness sort of, you can hear the bass, it gives the bass its, its place in the mix. Okay, let's bring in the compressors. Yeah, bass wasn't too bad to mix, mostly because the BOD plugin is, is pretty good. Uh, I'll go over those EQs actually, because I think it's important to know 
the bits that I'm boosting and cutting because they're tricky to get right. They're sort of mix dependent. So let me play you this and we'll take out the, the boost. We'll take out the, the, the cut first because that was horrible and then I'll take out the boost. And you can kind of hear it whistling away actually. Once it, well, like if I take it away, you'll hear that sort of whistle come back. Has to go right, and this is what this is. This is the boost. Funny enough, I think it's more noticeable in in with the whole mix. Let me show you. Sort of sits in the middle of the guitars because that's not a n nice area of the guitars. So I do sort of pull back. Um, you'll always get some sort of not nice honkiness around that area, and, that, and it's nice on bass. So why not pull out the guitars and fill it in on bass? Get them to sort of slot together a bit. And you can always give it a try. And then for some reason, even though I only have one bass track, I put I mixed more on the on the bass bus compression. Now you can see here. The attack is quicker, so I was pinning this in at this point rather than bringing out any extra transient and stuff like that. And then more tube EQ, doing nothing but some silky, some silky drive, whatever that, whatever that meant, but it sounded cool. Let me show you this without them. Anything you hear when this tube EQ comes on is all silk. Silky distortion. That's what silk sounds like. Okay, onto guitars. So these are my left and right 57 microphone and then my left and right ribbon mic. That's why the ribbon is down to 20, minus 20. It's just giving a bit more sort of like beef and fullness to the 57. But I've, I do have a video on this whole mix and how I actually did it like the the one that got released so i think it's mixing 2.0 you can go back and watch those videos again i'll link to those in the description so here we are the stock bus eq and then some eq that's because it's already a guitar tone so rolling off the low end we don't need pulling away the 1k like i was saying with the bass that's where we boosted on bass because it sounds nice on bass it doesn't sound nice on guitars a lot of the time some of those harsh frequencies which i would have used pro q3 probably with some dynamic EQ, so it only pulls that down when it needs to, when it starts to build up, but old school, you just have to sort of set it on the EQ. That's what those three are. I usually find one sort of between the three and four K range, one in the three K range, definitely. And then one in the between the two and three K range, and then one just under two K. Normally that's where I find them. Sometimes it can go up to sort of six K, something like that. But you know, you, we've all seen the, the EQ trick where you boost it, sweep around, find it, and then pull it out. That's how it was always done um, back before Soothe and before anything like that. And then the fizz at the top has gone as well. So let's hear the EQ before and after. Just cutting out the crap, really. Right, like there's some... Um, resonances in there i think the, the most prominent one is probably this 1k boost I'll, uh, I'll turn that off and on so you can see what that actually is it's sort of like wind coming through a hallway that's like a like a lower one there and those three usually in tandem are what that part of it as you can tell, I've got a really wide vocabulary. And then the tube EQ is probably just doing the 8K boost that I would normally do with the SSO in Waves. Yeah, so didn't quite attenuate as much this time. I, I put it to 8K and I do as much as I can get away with before it starts to sound hissy and thin. Because you want the presence. Guitars out of amps and amp sims usually sound a little dull. And if you boost them in the amp sim, it's just not as nice as boosting the top end with a plug-in afterwards personally so 8k is usually where you want to go uh, depending on the plug-in 
I've got a good place to start anyway, and then boost it until it starts to get thin and hissy and ruin the tone. So don't don't go that far. Bring it back. So let's hear this off and on. Yeah, there's a bit of life there. You can get away with a little bit more hiss, but in the mix, that can be quite crucial. Yeah, you have to listen for it, but it is there. There's sort of like an extra... It just opens the guitars up a little bit. So we've got the lead guitars now. These were tricky because what I normally do is I, like I've I got saturation on there, I've got the little micro shift from Sound Toys, and then I normally send them out to the CLA guitar plugin for all of the effects, so like the um, reverb, delay, that kind of stuff. Couldn't do any of that. So instead, we have the cut. I suppose I probably pulled the low end out, which is what I would... I suppose this is, this is emulating the Shep 73, so a bit of that sort of drive from a preamp. This is a, a console emulation, but similar sort of sound. And then I pulled the low end out because it's a lead, obviously. And then we have the VCA again, doing a little bit of compression, uh, graphic EQ, boosting the 1K area. We've got room there because we pulled it out from the other guitars. And sometimes you might need to boost the sort of not so traditionally nice areas on the lead, but going around the mids and pulling the, pulling the mids up on the leads can sometimes be what makes them heard. Sometimes boosting the top end might interfere with the cymbals, so sort of that mid area can be quite important and can bring those leads out. Then we're dealing with the issues, a little bit of the presence we can get away with there. And then we use the Ensemble plugin and I use the doubler preset to try and get that same sort of sound that I would have got from the micro shift from Sound Toys. And then the Stereo Delay plugin, which would have been emulating the delay in the CLA guitar plugin. And this was... Probably one of the harder ones to get right. Pulled the feedback off completely, 30%. And we've got it at set at uh, an eighth note. And then into the chroma verb, like I said before, and it's, I just I just opened up the, the the default setting and I was like, yep, that's exactly what it should be. And I just pulled the wet knob down. Now let's hear the before and after of this, shall we? And we'll get rid of the limiter because we're not using it. Yeah, cool. We'll take off the effects and we'll show them. So this is with just, literally just the compressor and then all the different EQ moves. The compressor was working just to make it a bit more intelligible about what the part was, because obviously there's going to be quite a few effects on there. So actually hearing the picking um, is what the compressor is just very lightly making that more audible in the whole mix. So Ensemble is doing this. Like a subtle doubling effect and then the delay is doing what delays do and then the chroma verb i just really like that that's also going to go into my mixes i think going forward I've used it maybe if once or twice on snare in the past, but it's going to be uh, hotly contended with Valhalla Room. Let's hear um, what the original sounded like, and then we'll hear what the stock version sounded like. I pulled more low end out of it this time. I don't know why. It sounds cool on its own, the low end, when I solo it, but you don't hear it in the whole mix. Probably why I did it this time around. But yeah, the, the same sort of thing is happening. So, okay, the octave part, which sounds like this. So, EQ, pulling the low end out. This is that mid range boost I was talking about that can bring, the, um, bring that lead out more against the rhythm guitars. Pulling out that, nut, that 1k stuff I don't like. And then a boost at 3k, who'd have thought it? But 
in with the mix, it made quite a big difference. Compressor again. This is really bringing out some of that transient, that slower attack. And look, soft on the distortion. It's adding up that saturation. And then stereo delay. This time, it wasn't in sync with the actual tempo. This is what I used to do way back in the day when I was first um, learning. It's to set it to milliseconds and have the left and right slightly off from each other. So they're five milliseconds apart. Uh, let's go through that one by one. The compressor. That saturation and the uh, little bit of volume boost, obviously, but I wanted to bring that attack out. And then the delay. Pushes it back and uh, spreads it out a little bit. And the last bit we'll show are these chords in the um, bridge area here. Go like this. Yeah, so in solo. So, by themselves. You can see how fizzy that sounds in solo, but that EQ in the context of the mix brings those out quite well. And then compressor, pretty similar, slow attack, so bringing out the actual transient of it. And chroma verb set to the same setting again. And off and on, sounds like this. Oh man, it's the life that, that gives it. Crazy. Oh, and we do actually have this here. I forgot about this track. This is the verses, which are interesting to mix. The left and right are doing something completely different. If I play them in solo. Actually my favorite guitar part of the, uh, of the song. So console, uh, we are boosting the low end because with this sort of like emo -y vibe, the low dark parts are quite cool to bring out. Cutting down some 200 just slightly. And then we've got a bit of that saturation happening on the smooth setting this time. The EQ just cutting out some of those mids, some of that sort of bite um, nastiness. I actually gain staging a little bit for once. I haven't been doing with the other stuff, but didn't need it, I, I hope. And then into the multipressor. Set to, so this is on dual mono, left only, because the left channel has palm mutes and the right doesn't. So therefore, this is the uh, sort of that Andy Sneep trick where it's only working on this little narrow band and only happening when the chords are palm muting. So let me show you. Yeah, there you go. So let's hear that whole verse, shall we? Okay, so that's the instrumental part done. The next video is going to be the vocals. Um, that would have been far too long to stick in on the end of this video. Also, if you if you have Logic and you want me to save these presets, these channel strip presets, I'm more than happy to do so. But let me know in the comments if that's something that would be helpful and I will uh, eventually get around to doing it. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you at the next one.